Hey YouTube, well the cycle down goes on and on. Had I known they're going to take this long to do when I started, I may have seriously considered using RHS and just welding up a pair of crappy looking arms. Nevertheless, we are nearing the end of it. I have the arms mounting on the cows, and next week I'll be putting on the plates to mount the hydraulics, and of course modifying the hydraulics to fit. So let's get on and see where I got up to this week. That's another video where I spend a lot of time behind the scenes making bushes and pins and such. Tedious and not very interesting work and I figure if you've seen it once you've seen all you need to see so I'll skip through this pretty quickly and get on to the main parts of the build. As you can see I welded the caps on, beveled it off. I've still got to drill the hole in for the R clip but I won't do that until right at the end. I'll make that probably the last thing after the arms are assembled. I don't want very much play in it, I want to make sure I get reasonably tight in on the bush that it rides against. So I say I'll leave that till towards the end. I've got this stack of four wrist splints and I've tacked them together just on the ends. Well, the tacks will be cut off when I place one of the uh, radiuses on the end. And I've got the centres of the holes marked on each end. I'm going to take them over to the drill press and put a 38mm annual cutter through them all. I won't bother filming that because you've seen plenty of that in use now. I'll just go over and drill them. The reason tacking them together is to make sure that I get the holes exactly the same in all four of them. Then, because my plasma cutter won't go through that thickness of metal, I'll split it into two sections so that I've only got two pairs tacked together and I'll cut the pairs with the plasma cutter so that each side is exactly the same. I'll go over there now, I've got the holes filled through all of them. I'll cut the centre pieces apart and just leave it in two pairs now to plasma the radius on the end. Okay, well finally, I have a halfway decent welding table to work on. I mean, none of it's in position yet, none of it's locked in. This is just a frame, but it's probably going to be the next project I upload, uh, next major project I upload at least, after I've uh, finished the front end loader. I'm going to use it now because I haven't got anything else really to spread out on. My other welding table you would have seen in the videos is tiny. It's like, I'd be lucky if it was from here to here and across. Nice big welding table to work on and at the moment I'm working on the link arm for the front end loader. They're part 025. I'm going to take one that way and one that way, fill the holes sort of there and there, and then plasma the curved shapes out of this. This is 200 by 280, and we need 95 by 270 to cut the arms out of, so this will work out nicely. A little bit of meat in it either side, and a little bit of meat on the ends. Actually, sorry. These plans don't have the updated sizes on them. I actually do need 100 by 280. So yes, 200 by, or just under 100 by the time I cut the plasma down the centre, that'll be about right. You'll see on the plans, you'll see once I mark it out here how I'm going to cut it. Okay, let's mark these out. The hole here is going to be 32 and a half. That's 32 and a half. From this side, we've got to go in 32 and a half. And 32 and a half in from this side to this one. Ten millimeters. And just check the separation, just to make sure I didn't make any miscalculations, and there we have 210. And we're all marked up. Okay, I'll just take them and give them a decent punch on a different table, because this one's not welded together yet. And then he's ready to drill. I did the drilling off camera, because I think you've probably seen enough of how to drill with an annual cutter. Alright, I'm just going to mark up these link arms now. I'm using this block here to centre my compass, so I can mark that radius there. The 
easy enough to mark it this way once you've got a line to follow. Find soap stones the best, but I haven't found a compass that'll hold the soap stone. Suppose they make them somewhere, they just haven't seen any around. Now, the thing I've got to do is to mark these curves here. And that's going to be a bit trickier because I want a 145 radius and a 205 radius and the chances of finding anything that I can sit over it that's the right radius is pretty remote. I'm going to have to make myself an arm that I can swing and mark them out that way. So I'll just go and repair that and then we'll come back and mark it. I've measured a line that's halfway between the two holes there and I've used this square to extend that line out across the table slats. Now we want to come out uh, 140 from the centre line between these two holes. I haven't drawn yet but we know it's 32 and a half in and we're coming out 140 so 140 minus 32 and a half is 107 and a half. So if we come out 107 and a half roughly off this line here, which is there, that's the centre of our sweeps. Our 145 sweep, I've just got this bit of tin here that I've punched a couple of holes through at the right spot. That's our 145. Here's our 225. Catching on the burrs around the edge of the hole, but there you are. That's got him marked. I'll just extend this line right across and just repeat the process here. And there we go. I've just got to plasma them out now and uh, give them a bit of a grind off to smooth them up. Got to weld the bushes in, but that's not going to happen until I'm ready to assemble it so I can make sure everything lines up properly. I can't plasma today because my plasma table's outside and it's raining constantly. So I'll have to put them aside to do them a little bit later. And now I've got to cut out these pieces for the tractor. These are all to do with the wrist area between the front hydraulic ram and the bucket. Since they're relatively small radiuses, well, except for this big arc here, but I don't have anything to run a radius around at the moment, so I'm going to freehand a whole lot of it, and hopefully it won't come out too bad. I'll be able to uh, grind it all nice and smooth and looking nice and even and all the rest of it. Start with the easy one first. And I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that could do a better job of that. But, yeah, I'm still coming to terms with the plasma cutter. And I managed to stay outside the lines for the most part. For all of it, actually. I managed to stay on the right side of the line, so I'll be able to grind it down to something that looks nice and smooth and... Is all ground up now, ready for the next step, it's manufacture. I've got these parts, this is part 024, I call it the wrist link, and this is part 025, I call it the link arm. Each one's a stack of four, a stack of four there as well. Cut them out on the plasma and ground them down, all as one unit so that they're all very much the same. So they're ready to go. I'll leave them together as one unit like that until I am ready to put them onto the arms of the front end loader. And then I'll weld in the bushes that are going to take the pins. They'll be welded into the right spot to hold it just the right distance away from the other one so we're not rubbing the whole base up against it, we're just rubbing up against the bushing. So, yeah, they're ready to go. Our next step is to get the arms ready. I made a bit of a mistake here too. I don't know what happened, but anyway, I've got to cut through a bit of this on both sides and bend this front down. I'll alter the CAD plans to match what I build, of course. I'll turn the handle on this around, first time ever. I said when I got it I didn't think I'd be using cut-off wheels in it, well, wrong again. Hmm, okay, I'll get to the other side, but unfortunately, there's nothing for it, I'm going to have to finish this with a hand hacksaw. So I've got the arm sitting in place for the first time. 
So I thought a quick happy snap of that would be appropriate. A bit of measuring up to do before I can put them in properly. I've got to cut two of the rams, two lifting rams for size, and I've got to measure up all the other fittings to mount the hydraulics. There we go, we've got good movement in them. I've got the front of the tractor jacked up about two inches, which is about as much uh, below the ground level that I want to put the bucket. And these go down and just touch the ground, so that's perfect for them. You can probably see the tractor just sitting on these bits of metal, very, very makeshift. Very makeshift, but it's two inch RHS or SHS is one of them, and just enough to get it up at the right height. So, press on with the rest of it. I've got the pivot pins in properly now. It's not real easy to get a measurement across here because the tractor's in the way, so the best I can do is down this way, where I have 971 outside to outside. Down here I have 985, so I've got to pull them in together 14 millimetres. And now I can see about welding in these bushes for the pins. Now this is a sequence that I'm using to get the arms lined up on each side of the tractor so that they're parallel, not twisted at all in any way, shape or form. Now there may be better ways to do it, but this is what I've got to work with, so this is the way I am doing it. I've gone and put the pin in, the pivot pin in for the arms, and I've got the bushes just sitting in there. The bushes have uh, got to get welded in around there, and they're a little bit loose in this outside hole, so that there's a little bit of movement there. Once I get it all lined up, I'll tack those bushes in, and then once they're tacked in well enough that they won't warp, I'll go ahead and weld all around them. And hopefully that's going to make sure that everything's going to stay the way I mount it. I've done the same over here on the other side. You've got to cut the pin off yet. I'm going to start bracing this across so that I can make sure I get everything parallel. At that far end where it's attached to the towers, that's not going to move. I'm going to put a brace along here, just on the bend area, to brace that apart at the same distance as the towers. And then I should be able to work on the floor end of it and that'll make sure there's no twist in them. That's the theory anyway. I'll video how I go with it and we'll see how it turns out. Alright, I've just got a brace clamped across here. The main thing is that it's holding it the same distance apart as the uh, bend section as it is at the towers. We're 8mm out down this end. I've got the sliding surface there. Need to make sure nothing's moved here. Yep, that's still perfect and I fully expect that this will be perfect too because the towers aren't going to go very far. Oh, they have though, they have. Let's tip the towers over a bit because there is some lateral movement in it. Alright, I'll go off camera while I rethink this. Alright, I adjusted the brace across this centre so that my outside to outside is exactly 965, which is 3 foot 2 inches. Same top, same bottom. I just see that these are, are sitting at the very least on the same angle. Which they are. I'm not sure that the floor's level. But they're sitting at the same angle, that's a good start. Yeah, the floor's not level either, so that's actually looking really good. If that was level, that would probably all be about right. Since I haven't got a level bit of floor, well, I think I'm going to have to call that near enough. I'll call that near enough. I'll go ahead and tack those bushes in place on the towers. And once they're in place, I can see about mounting the hydraulics, the hydraulic lift for the arms. Now I'll just turn the camera off for a second while I set everything up. See if we can get a few tacks on this. And just a moment doing the same again on this other side. Got them. Right, that's all I'm doing. With this I'm going to pull it all apart again now. 
I'm not ready to weld the arms together yet, but now seems like an appropriate time to give them a lift and just see if they work in unison. And that'll be easily done with my support or my bar here wasn't going to catch on the light fitting. Beauteous! Who needs hydraulic rams when you've got arms? Okay, now to get it all apart again. And then I'll weld those bushes in and then it's time to start thinking about getting the hydraulic lift arms in. Well, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. Next week I'll be putting the plates on the arms for the hydraulic rams. If you'd like to see more of my videos, you can go to my channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time.